Mr. President. Senator from North Dakota. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today on the relief that the HEALS Act will provide to those in farm country and rural America as they weather the challenges of COVID-19. And it's so important. They're out there for us every day producing that food supply. They had incredible challenges before this COVID-19 started. The President as you, is from an ag state. You know the kind of challenges they were facing. And so obviously we need to be there for them as we uh, go through this coronavirus fight. And, and I want to start by thanking them. Uh, they provide us with the uh, lowest cost, highest quality food supply in the world. So think about it. Every single American benefits every single day from what our farmers and ranchers do with food, fuel, and fiber. Just the food piece alone means that Americans have the highest quality, lowest cost food supply in the world, in the history of the world, thanks to our farmers and ranchers. So rarely, rarely if ever, has there been a more appropriate time to say thank you to the men and women who provide us uh, with that food supply. And uh, the resilience of our ag producers in the face of tremendous hardship caused by the global health pandemic serves as a real testament to their grit and to their determination. And that's why we've worked uh, to provide additional support for farmers and ranchers and processors uh, through in this HEALS Act. And the legislation includes uh, $20 billion in uh, direct appropriation, uh, which uh, will be used for our farmers and ranchers, uh, along with other funding that we were able to secure in the CARES Act. So we're trying to also do it in a cost-effective way, recognizing that we've got a debt and a deficit we have to be mindful of. So what we're trying to do is actually utilize funding that we put together in the CARES Act for the CCC, Commodity Credit Corporation. We're taking $14 billion of that, combining it with $20 billion in this legislation uh, to uh, make sure that we have adequate funding, which should total about $34 billion, to uh, address the needs uh, in farm country. Uh, prior to the coronavirus, farmers entered 2020 uh, after seven years of rural recession caused by low commodity prices, trade disruptions, and some really tough weather, uh, natural disasters. Uh, our farmers and ranchers are the eternal optimists. They have to be. And so they go into every year uh, with that grit and determination and continue to provide that food supply that we all rely on. Uh, but now, of course, uh, you add the COVID-19 into the mix. Storefronts have closed. Uh, restaurants have shuttered their doors. Processing plants have limited in some and in some cases shut down operations. And, and of course, ag prices are, are down. And uh, so they, farmers and ranchers came into a tough situation, and now they're facing uh, further challenges with the uh, pricing and the other challenges created by COVID-19, as I said. Uh, though it'll take some time to really quantify those losses, uh, the reports we have right now indicate losses in the ag sector could be near uh, $42 billion. And just for example, in the cattle industry alone uh, could total as much as $13 billion. So, uh, you know, we need to be there for them because, again, they're not only out there producing the food, they're, they're doing other things to help out as well. For example, uh, just a couple stories about uh, our farmer groups making an effort to help others. Uh, in May, R.D. Offutt Farms, one of our nation's premier potato growers and based in Fargo, North Dakota, donated 37,000 pounds of frozen potato products to the uh, Great Plains Food Bank. Uh, North Dakota Stockman's Association and their foundation donated $20,000 to the same food bank to purchase beef from North Dakota ranchers. Uh, North Dakota Farmers Union and uh, Farmer Union Enterprises teamed up to donate 30,000 pounds of pork ribs to the Great Plains Food Bank as well. And those type of stories go on. So while the farmers and ranchers of America are out there fighting their own challenges, they're helping others at the same time. And I think that that is truly, truly remarkable. Um, in the CARES Act, we took the first important step by providing $9.5 billion, .5 billion to the USDA, Department of Ag, uh, along with the 14 I just referenced to replenish the CCC. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to now take, we, we've utilized some of that funding to provide assistance, but now we're going to take that additional $14 billion, combine it with the funding here, $20 billion, to make sure uh, that we can get that assistance out to the farmers. So again, working to do this in a way where we're being uh, 
prudent with our taxpayers' dollars, recognizing uh, the challenges we have with debt and deficit, and we have to be mindful of that, but at the same time, making sure that we're getting adequate assistance out to those great farmers and ranchers across America who are getting it done for all Americans every single day. Thank you, Mr. President. With that, I yield the floor.